Starting with sports science, Anton McElhone, he was appointed a year ago in October 21 as head of the sports science department. He'd spent around 10 years at Spurs, I believe, and also had spells in the MLS, Bradford City and Greenock Morton. Muff, a buggy. Um, quote here from Angie at the time. So he says, we brought in Anton in terms of our sports science and he's been brilliant since he came in. Not just with what he's able to input, but also helping the existing staff because we've been a man or two short in that area. There are other areas we're looking to bolster, particularly in terms of scouting and recruitment. It's not about replacing people, and it's certainly not about me bringing people in I've worked with in the past. I've always tried to bring in the best people possible, irrespective of their backgrounds or whether I've worked with them or not, because when you go, do go down that track, you're limiting yourself. We'll cast the net far and wide, we'll get the best people in, we need to bring in more people to bolster the existing structure. And I think that was a clear indication, James, at that time, Ange himself wasn't long in the door, but... He's seen that there were gaps in, in various areas behind the scenes. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of what we're dealing with at Celtic is the kind of parsimony of law going back years and years. Why would I sign two guys for the back room when I've got a manager who can just do that job? And it's not possible. Ange covers so much mm -hmm. that he shouldn't be covering. You know, obviously we're bringing guys in to take jobs off him. But this is years and years in the making at Celtic, and it's why maybe come on to youth development. It's why nothing's happening in that department as well. So... Um, I think I just came in and went, who's your sports science guy? I haven't got one of them. You know, just so he's had to go and start building that team and good that we're starting to, to see players come in. I think what it gives them, I think there's a point on Abelgard why we're not seeing him. The sports science guys will be getting all the measures and all the kind of stats from training on him and say, yeah, he's not going to finish games yet. He's he's, he's at this level and he's to be at that level. That, that'll be backed up with data that we now have compared to a year ago or a year and a half ago we didn't. Yeah. Miff, the word parsimony making its debut on the show tonight, how do you feel about it? Uh, thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Um, James, to your point there, so Ange has also stressed that he now has access to so much data that, that we just don't and cannot see as, as supporters of the club and that helps him in terms of the, the selection and the rotation and the decisions he makes amongst a, you know, a busy fixture list and I suppose that's got to come down to McElhone and his team. We suffered badly last year with a lot of soft tissue injuries to the likes of Jota, Kyogo, David Turnbull and a few others and I think we've definitely seen a lot less of that this time around. Um, the, you know, at this very moment in time, Callum McGregor is the only first team player currently out injured. Everyone's back in full training and that was a knock, you know, obviously took you know a big impact in the the Leipzig game. So, I mean, Miff, would you say that there's obvious improvements in that area? I, you know, I just interject a wee bit. They're playing less football, the guys. You know, they're, they're better rotated than they were last year, so mm. that's a part of it as well. Sorry, oh, yeah, all part of the, the bigger picture, isn't it? Yeah, but, I mean, I think there's just a wider point here that you've already touched on with regards to the, the neglect that these areas have seen over, over the years and it felt, I, can't, I still recall the podcast we did towards the end of Lennon's tenure and it just felt we, we just weren't a progressive club at all. I think with Angie at the helm, you feel like a progressive club. You feel the, the club is a very modern and moving in the the right direction with regards to sports science, the structure that's going on behind the scenes. I'm having a night where I'm punching my mic again. Sorry. Yeah. It happens every every four or five weeks. It's in my boxing. We'll we'll get, get animated. Yeah. My boxing. We'll get through it. Um, thanks, guys. Cheers. I appreciate the support. Um, so I, I, I think the, the, the key point here is that if Ange feels he has more data now than he had a year ago, then that should make us happy because that's what he's wanted and what he's needed. I, My biggest concern about Celtic in the future is that... God, I can't believe I'm going to say this. Don't say it. I, you know, you know what, don't what's it. coming. Right? <laughs> that day will come. It will come. And... My hope is that everything. Do you want to tell the listeners what you're talking about? Just so Angela, you know. even he'll, he'll, he'll go, he'll go, right? He will, he will one day. Hopefully, he does now, by the way. But it's just all those things being in place behind the scenes so that it's, you know, somebody coming in. Obviously, they'll, they'll have their own. They'll have their own ideas and probably have their own people that they want to get in. But the structure behind the first team squad is in place mm -hmm. so that it's plug and play in terms of the individuals that come in. So, yeah. whether by luck or design, we've, we have avoided that. Brendan Rodgers situation you know we, we didn't have the structure there before Ange but we've been letting Ange build that not as his guys but as Celtics guys so you know it, it's a wee bit left out yep. so if and when <sighs> God forbid I know I, I, I'm sorry I'm it sorry it should be easier to, to step into I'm kind of hoping Ange does a willy mailie and hangs around for 50 odd years that would be nice that would yeah. be nice keeps things ticking over Paddy a question for you um, sports science obviously plays a huge part in you know recovery and, and the general fitness and well-being of the players 
do you think the the players seem fitter this time around? And, and just an extension of that question, a lot of people have talked about it, and Miff, you've mentioned it about us flagging at sixty minutes. But is that just the way Ange plays? You know, if you played in a dare I say a more regular system, these guys could probably see out the ninety minutes. But you know, such as the high intensity of Ange's system and the pressing and and everything that's involved. Do you think they're fit to a point, you know, they can maybe last 60 minutes of that and that's why Ange does what he does, frequently makes the three, four and five subs at that, around about that time of the game. Do you think they're fitter in general than what they were? I do, I do. I think um, kind of what we've, we've seen in some of the games where they start to lag, that also kind of gets showed up with just kind of what James was saying, some of the players that are coming on, the personnel that's maybe just a bit more safer on the ball, isn't playing the more quicker attacking and free-flowing football that Ange likes to play. So it almost kind of looks as if they're slowing it down for the rest of the guys that are on there, in a sense. Um, but I definitely think the team are a lot fitter. I think, you know, we're still going to the final minute to to go and get some some of the victories this season. And that is, this is with huge squad rotation as well. Um, that, that's going to play a massive part. But also, for some of these guys, this kind of routine of being at a certain level, playing at this high tempo that we play every single week, will be new to them. Um, so that can, that maybe takes six mon- months to get used to mm-hmm. maybe takes a year to get used to I think Abogard is, is one of the, the, the best examples on that still not a lot of game time I definitely think he should have played more it's not really for me to say though yeah, I think what's really interesting is that the data is probably telling Ange why he, he shouldn't shouldn't play certain guys whether it's Abogard or others <clears throat> the big call at the weekend was for Jack and Marcus to start everyone banging the drum the physical aspect the plastic pitch you name it but there was also a suggestion that he was flagging a wee bit after the Leipzig game. He was holding his hamstring towards the end of the game. Not necessarily an injury, but maybe just fatigued. And I'm sure the data plays out, you know, and it, and it lets you see that, ah, do you know what, Ange? He's a wee bit less than optimal for this game. And there's so much that goes into Ange's decision. It's not just on paper. You're not you're not playing championship manager here and just, you know, moving the markers around and saying, we'll go with this guy. And I think we've got to trust the data and trust Ange. I, th- I think he was spot on with playing Kyogo. I know obviously it's easy to say when he scored, but perfect example, if you're looking at other types of data, and that part was wet. It's mm, never fast. it's never wet, it was fast. Yeah. And, you know, the the ball is played into him. He takes one touch away for the defender, goal. You know, and that that bright spark, that quickness from Kyogo is maybe something that you don't get with Jack and Mac because he maybe takes an extra touch. Um, whereas the physical battle, I get where everyone's coming from, but we didn't need to do that yeah. on Saturday at all. Uh, it, Sunday, sorry. It was a very smart call, and you know, nine minutes in, and it's a completely different picture. 